Okay, so to continue with the um, the seven limb prayer, the third one is <clears throat> is confession. Or actually, I've discovered that repentance is a better translation because repentance includes confession plus making amends. And so it's just confession isn't actual purification. We have to make the amends too. So apparently when I looked up uh, repent, which is not a word I really like, um, in the dictionary it had the, the meaning we wanted. Uh, if anybody can find a better word than repent, please tell me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but the idea of this, the third branch, is to purify negativities. And that's really important because uh, our mind is covered over not only by the afflictions, but also by the seeds of actions that we've done in the past. And so the destructive actions can ripen and create impediments in our practice, like sickness or inability to meet teachers or, you know, difficulty understanding the Dharma, falling asleep during teachings, things like that. And, uh, you know, so they create obstacles in our practice and, you know, really prevent us from understanding what the Buddha is saying and making progress on the path. So this whole thing of, of purification is quite important. And I think psychologically also it's very important um, because it allows us to make peace with our past. Yeah. When, you know, when we look back and we've done negative actions, one thing is, you know, we may not feel so good about what we've done in the past. <clears throat> and so having that sense of guilt or heaviness really weighs us down and impedes us from practicing the Dharma and builds a lot of negative, um, uh, self-worth, you know, oh, look at the kind of things I did in the past. I was so awful. And then we, uh, you know, we uh, demean ourselves. And so that's not very effective spiritually or psychologically. And so purification really helps us to, ad you know, admit and acknowledge and make amends for things that we've done in the past that we uh, now wish that we hadn't done and that we don't want to experience the karmic results of. And, uh, yeah, so, and also purification. It works because sometimes we think, oh, I acted negatively or I have these negative emotions because of what other people did. Yeah, and so we don't make peace with what other people did. But I think actually what I'm discovering more and more is we're not making peace with our personal response to what other people did. Yeah, because we can't change what other people did, you know, to us or around us or whatever. But often we respond with a, a very afflictive state of mind and create destructive karma in response to that. And then we stay stuck in whatever afflictive emotion that we had, not thinking that we have to purify it because it's it's more, this person did that to me, so they need to purify what they did to me. But actually, we need to purify our emotional response to what they did. Yeah, are you, are you getting what I'm saying? You know, like if somebody, uh, uh, like I keep telling you, you know, this stupid thing with my second grade teacher who wouldn't let me be in the class play. So, you know, so it's a trivial thing, but it's a good example, okay? So here's the situation. That situation is never going to change. I'm never going to be in second grade again. I'm never going to have the opportunity to be in that play. That my teacher, Mrs. Ducamina, I'm sure she probably isn't alive now, or if she is, you know, she's not going to remember me. 
And so that whole thing is over. There's no way to change that situation. Okay? What I discovered in my Vajrasava retreat years ago is I was still angry with her about that. What I can change is my anger towards her. Okay, I can't change what she did. I may not have done anything uh, what I would consider unethical. You know, I didn't talk back to her. I didn't do that stuff. But I'm still harboring malice about what happened in second grade. And harboring malice puts the, you know, the negative uh, karmic seeds or the seeds of negative karma on my mind stream. Okay, so I need to, res- to purify my response to what she did. Yeah, okay. Because that's the only thing about the situation I can ever change, is my response to what somebody else did. I can never change what they did. Yeah, but if I stay stuck in the response that I initially had, which may have been a very, very afflicted one, anger, resentment, or who knows what it was, then my own mind is impeding itself. Okay? So when I talk about making peace with the past, it's like looking at things that happened to us and practicing the Dharma, finding another way to see the situation. Yeah, like this is a result of my own negative karma. Why am I getting mad at somebody else? Okay, or look at me. I'm still mad about something that happened in second grade. Like, children, it's time to put this down. You know, nobody else among seven billion human beings on this planet care about your not being in the class play in second grade. Do you really have to make such a big deal about it in your life? That, I talk to myself that way. So for, maybe for you, that way of talking to yourself doesn't work. But for me, it works. And it's like, yeah, it's time to forget about this. <laughs> you know, and forgive Mrs. Ducom and, and wish her well and have other memories of second grade besides this one. (laughs) Because there were many happy things that happened in second grade, too. Why am I only remembering this one? Okay? So that way, I find when we use the Dharma, it it really um, purifies previous negativities and enables us to go forward with um, a much clearer and much more peaceful mind. Okay, so the purification process itself has four uh, opponent powers. So the first one is regret, you know, for whatever we did, or maybe it's regret for this afflictive emotion, even though we didn't act anything out. There still might have been, you know, the non virtuous action of malice, which is a mental one, yeah or non-virtuous mental action of coveting, or whatever it is, okay? And so having regret for what we did, um, and knowing that regret is not guilt, so we're not blaming ourselves, we're not blaming anybody, we're just realizing we made a mistake and owning that mistake, that's all. Like, I did that, I got to acknowledge it. And all the other stuff that comes with guilt, like, that means I'm a terrible person and how can anybody ever love me? They never will love me and I can't let anybody else know this about me because then they'll think what an awful person I am and I'm so guilty and, you know, I'm going to get punished and even though I'm a Buddhist now, I'm going to go to Christian hell and, you know, and we get totally, you know, confused. So that's, that's not this first power. It's simply regret. Like when you have, I like this example, when you have, uh, you know, the, the stoves with the, 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 elect, the coil and you turn it off, but the coil still hot, is hot, you may accidentally touch the coil. 
Yeah, you regret that, but you don't feel guilty. So that's the difference between regret and guilt. Yeah, it's like, I touched that hot, hot. Oh, sorry, I did. You know, I did that negative action. Sorry, I did. Yeah, but it's not, oh, I touched the, the coil. Oh, look what a terrible person I am. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it doesn't go into all that guilt tripping stuff. Okay, so regret. The second one is they call reliance. I call restoring the relationship. What it means is that whoever we acted, uh, you know, in a in a destructive way towards, we create a, a virtuous motivation and we restore the relationship, at least mentally in our own on our own side, so that we're not holding a grudge. We're not holding anything towards uh, whoever it was that we harmed. Yeah, because it's interesting. We harm somebody else. So you'd think, you know, we need to clean up our own act. But the way our mind works is we blame the other person. (laughs) Yeah, so this is is really restoring the relationship by creating a, a good intention. So in the case of sentient beings, cultivating a bodhicitta, motivation towards them uh, when we've done negativities in relationship to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha to take refuge in them. Okay, and that acts as the, the second step. The third one is making a determination not to do the action again. So there are some things we can truthfully say, I will never do that again because we've looked and no way do we want to do that again. Okay, there are other actions like, you know, gossiping that maybe we can't truthfully say I'll never do again. So then you give yourself a set period of time and you really keep it very strictly in that set period of time. And then if you do well, you can, you know, generate, yeah, another. So for the next three days, I'm not going to talk about other people behind their back. Okay, and you do it for three days, and then, oh, I did that. Pretty pretty good. So another three days, I'll, I'll make that determination. Okay? And then the fourth of the f- four opponent powers is some kind of remedial behavior. So this could be like when we do the 35 Buddhas, we're uh, reciting the Buddha's names. We're uh, prostrating to them. Uh, also making offerings to the three jewels, doing volunteer work for some kind of charity or doing volunteer work at the Dharma Center or the monastery or the temple. Any kind of virtuous action can be the remedial behavior that we do. Sponsoring Dharma books for free distribution. You know, there's so many things that you can do that are um, the remedial behavior. And so it's very good, you know, to, uh, although we just say in the short seven limb prayer, I confess all my destructive actions created since beginningless time. Actually, you could stop at that line and probably meditate for a few eons. Um, yeah, or, or at least, you know, a little bit more time. And uh, we always uh, confess and repent all of our negativities. But it's also good to think of specific ones that we've done that really weigh on our mind that we really don't feel good about and uh, focus on those too because the four opponent powers uh, really helps us just make peace with all of that and put it down. Okay. So we usually do um, purification practice every day because we also usually create destructive karma every day. So, uh, you know, it's a good habit to get into. And, you know, even though we can't remember what we've done in previous lives, they say we've done everything, so it's always good to confess it. Don't worry about, oh, I confess something I didn't do. Um, because we don't know what we've done in our previous lives, so we can't know if we've really done that or not. But we certainly can make strong determinations, uh, you know, that not to do that kind of action again. 
And that's very, very helpful to us. So you'll, you'll notice when we were talking about the conditions for being born in Sukhavati, the purification is one of them. So this third of the seven limb prayer is specializing in that. 